In this problem, we're told the crate shown in this figure lies on a plane tilted at an angle of theta equals 25 degrees to the horizontal with mu sub k equal to 0.19. A, determine the acceleration of the crate as it slides down the plane, and B, if the crate starts from rest 8.15 meters up the plane from its base, what will be the crate speed when it reaches the bottom of the incline? So I'm actually going to just redraw this figure here. So this is going to be our slope, right? So here's our slope. And so they tell us the angle of this slope. We know that the angle is going to be 25 degrees. So this is 25 degrees. And so let me redraw the box. So this is going to be our box M. And so the first thing that we want to do whenever we do these problems is, or we can write down our given first. So let's actually just write down the given. So what are we told uh, besides this? We know mu sub k, right? Our coefficient of kinetic friction is going to be equal to 0.19. So we know that. And so now what we want to do is go ahead and do a free body diagram and label the different forces acting on our box. That's the next step. So we know straight down we're going to have the force of gravity, right? So force of m times g, right? So we have a force going down, the weight force, making it go down. And then we have another force, uh, the normal force, right? So anything touching an object is going to have a normal force acting against it, right? But keep in mind, it's not going to be straight up. It's going to be uh, perpendicular to... Uh, the surface that it's touching right so the normal force is going to be pointing in this direction so this is f sub n and so i forgot to mention that whenever you do these problems you want to make sure that you treat this line right here so imagine this is the x-axis and then perpendicular that is the y-axis right it's not straight like this right so it's at a curve right so this would be your y this would be your x so just keep that in mind when you solve this and so you also need to know that we have a force acting in this direction which is going to be your friction force, right? So I like to think of a the force of friction, right? It's something like a force going in the opposite direction, making it harder for you uh, to slide down. And so what you should notice is that since I labeled these, or this is the X and this is the Y, what we want to do is split our weight force into X and Y components. So it's uh, so we can actually able, so we can solve. So essentially what we're going to want to do is split this up. And the way you want to think about it is, right? So this is going to be our Y component, right? Because this is the Y axis. So this is our y, and then at the same slope as this is our x, right? So imagine this line right here, same slope as this. And so what we want to do is find the weight force of each of these. And so what you need to know here is that this angle theta is going to be the same angle as this. So the angle of this line right here, or this slope, or this like uh, angle, right, is going to be 25 degrees. So that's something you have to keep in mind when you do this. So what I'm going to do is redraw this triangle here. So imagine this is our triangle. And so we know that the angle is 25 degrees, right? Because this angle is the same as this one. And so you need to know that mg is essentially this length right here. You want to treat it as that. And this length right here is our hypotenuse. So this is mg. And what we're trying to do is find this and this, right? So these two sides. And so the way we're going to do that is by using uh, trig. So we know the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite. I'm just going to call this y for now. Uh, y over the hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. Right, so it's going to be mg times the sine of 25 is going to be equal to y, right? And so this side right here is this part right here. So this line right here. So this is going to be mg times the sine of 25. Now we want to do this one, uh, this side right here, right? So the y component of our weight force. So we know the cosine of our angle is equal to the adjacent, I'm going to call it x for now, over the hypotenuse. So over mg. If you multiply both sides by mg, that's going to go ahead and give you the uh, vertical component. So this right here is mg times the cosine of 25. And so now that we've got all our forces, I'm going to go ahead and redraw this box just so it's a little bit easier to understand. So just imagine like it's not at the curve anymore, or like it's curved. So the way we see it is just straight. So the vertical uh, component of our weight force we know is uh, mg times the cosine of 25. So this right here, mg times the cosine of 25, is that. And then notice how we have mg times the sine of 25 is going to be like a force going in this direction, right? And it's going to be positive because it's, uh, remember we treat this as x and y, so this direction is positive, this is negative, this is positive, this is negative, right? So up is positive, down is negative. So we have this force, right, going this way, which is mg times the sine of 25. What else do we have? So we also have the normal force going up, right? So F sub n. And then in this direction, we have uh, the force of friction. 
So label like that. So this is just a way to easier to understand it so it's not at a curve like this. And so now what we want to do is find the sum of the forces in each direction. That's the next step. So sum of the forces in the y direction and the sum of forces in the x direction. So you need to know that the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be equal to ma, right? Our mass times our acceleration because we're going to be accelerating going down, right? And that's what we're trying to determine. But in the y direction, it's just going to be equal to zero because a in this case is going to be zero because notice how we don't move in the y direction at all, right? Like if you see this line right here, we don't move upwards at all. We're staying on our x-axis. So we, if we're not moving in the direction, acceleration is zero. So now what we want to do is set these equal to the sum of the forces in each direction. So let's go ahead and start with the x direction. What do we know? So the forces in the x direction are going to be f sub f and mg times the sine of 25. So if it's positive, you want to keep it positive. Or if it's to the right, you want to keep it positive. If it's going left, it's negative. So in this case, it's mg times the sine of 25. And then notice how uh, the force of friction is to the left. So we label it as negative. And so uh, let's go ahead and do this one now. So 0 is going to be equal to... And so this is the y, right? So y, we have f sub n, it's going up, so it's positive. mg times the cosine of 25 is going down, so it's negative. And so now that we've done that, what we're trying to do is essentially solve this formula. The force of friction is equal to mu sub k times f sub n. And so what you should notice is that these two formulas, we can solve for the variables in these equations, and we can actually solve. So let's go ahead and do this one first. So f sub n, if we just add mg times the cosine of 25, we're going to get f sub n equals mg times the cosine of 25, right? Just add this to the other side. So when we do this equation, we're just going to replace it. So mg times the cosine of 25 is f sub n, right? I'm going to label mu sub k too, so that's 0.19. I'm putting it in the equation here. And then let's plug in f sub f. So uh, if we add this to the other side, right, you'll get uh, the force of friction plus ma is equal to mg times the sine of 25, right? So ng sine of 25, and then we can minus ma from both sides. So the force of friction is equal to minus or mg times the sine of 25 minus ma. So we're just going to replace it with that. So plugging this in, mg times the sine of 25 minus ma. And so notice what we're solving for here. Now we have this um, variable a, which is the acceleration, and that's what essentially what we're solving for. So now we just got to manipulate this equation and solve. What you should notice here is that though the m's will all cancel, so m, m, m are all gone. So g times the sine of 25 uh, minus a equals 0.19 times the cosine, or 0.19 times g times the cosine of 25. And so what we're going to do is minus this to the other side. So minus a equals 0.19 cosine 25. And then it's minus g, right? Because we're minusing it. Minus g times cosine 25. And then we want to get rid of the negative, right? So minus 0.19 cosine of 25. And then this is going to become a plus, right? Because we're just minusing uh, both sides to get rid of it on this side. So plus g times the sine of 25. And so I actually forgot to put this G here. Keep in mind, there's a G right here. I just forgot to write it. And so essentially, A is going to be equal to minus 0.19 times the cosine of 25 plus G times the sine of 25. So this is going to be our equation we use to solve. And so we can actually just go ahead and solve this now, right? So realize that uh, G is just the... I forgot to write it again. My bad. There's a G right here. So 0.19 or minus 0.19 G. Sorry about that, but uh, keep in mind that uh, g is just equal to the force of gravity. So we just got to plug it in, right? So it's just going to be minus 0.19 times 9.8 times the cosine of 25, and then plus 9.8 times uh, the sine of 25. And so if you go ahead and do that, you're going to get a. And so if you go ahead and do that, you're going to get 2.54 meters per second squared. So this is what your acceleration is going to be, your answer to A. So the acceleration as it slides down is 2.54 or 45 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration now. And so now we're going to move on to B. So I'm actually going to erase everything on the screen. So if you need it, go ahead and write it down. But I'm going to be erasing it. So I'm going to be erasing it in a few seconds. So write it down if you need it. So we know acceleration is 2.45 meters per second squared. So meters per second squared. 
And so let's go ahead and find out what B is asking. So it says, if the crate starts from rest, uh, it's 8.15 meters up the plane from its base, when will, or what will be the crate speed when it reaches the bottom? So let me re go ahead and redraw our incline here. So this is our incline. And so remember how I said you want to treat, uh, treat this line right here as the x-axis. So if it says it starts uh, 8.15 meters up, it's going to travel 8.15 meters, right? So essentially, it's just traveling 8.15 meters in the x direction. So just keep that in mind. And so this is going to be just like a kinematic equation. So we're going to be solving one of those. And I always do those by writing down the given. So what are we told? Our change in x is going to be 8.15 meters. So, right, because we're going 8.5 meters or 8.15 meters in the x direction. So that's that. Delta x equals 8.15 meters. We're also told it's starting from rest. So the initial velocity, right, is going to be... Uh, zero meters per second, right? We're not moving if you're at rest. We know the acceleration is going to be equal to 2.5 or 4.5 meters per second squared. And what are they asking us for? The crate speed when it reaches the bottom of the incline. So we're solving for a speed. We can just say, what's the velocity when all these variables are these variables, right? So essentially what we're going to do is just plug these into a kinematic equation and solve. And so the equation that you want to use here is v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta x. So hopefully by now uh, you can solve kinematic equations because uh, they're really useful. So if we just plug in our variables, what we can do is solve. So we're solving for v. So v squared equals v sub zero, which is zero squared, which is zero, right? And zero plus anything to zero just goes away. So two times a, which is 2.45. And then our change in x is going to be 8.15, right? So if we square root both sides, it's going to get rid of the squared. So it's going to be equal to the square root of 2 times 2.45 times 8.15. So if you go ahead and do this, the square root of 2 times 2.45. Here, let me plug in my calculator one second. So it's the square root of 2 times 2.45 times 8.15. If you go ahead and do that, you're going to get, it's about 6.3 meters per second, right? So you're going to get, it says 6.319 and so on. I'm just going to round. So 6.3 meters per second, right? Because it's velocity meters per second. So the speed, right? Uh, the crate speed when it reaches the bottom of the incline, 6.3 meters per second. And so, yeah, that's going to be your answer to B. Answer to A was the acceleration, which was 2.45 uh, meters per second squared. And so, yeah, that's how you solve this problem. And hopefully you found this video useful.